Hey there guys, Chili here coming at you with another SFML tutorial. Well, I mean this one isn't really SFML specific. We're going to be using SFML, we're going to be building off of the sprite animation tutorial. But uh, this stuff here that we're talking about is really applicable to any kind of programming. Uh, the topic for today is how to safely, easily and elegantly implement resource sharing between entities in your system, generally in your game. Uh, and we're going to be, again, like I said, we're going to be building off of the sprite animation code that I started with in a previous tutorial, but this tutorial isn't geared at the beginner level, it's geared more at the intermediate level. So we're going to be using a little bit more advanced stuff, just keep that in mind. If you're like, oh, chili, this isn't, what well, you're not explaining anything, well, I'm sorry, but this tutorial probably isn't for you if a lot of this stuff I'm talking about is way over your head. You can still watch, you can still ask questions and everything, but just don't get pissed off if I don't explain all this stuff that I'm using. It's just assumed that you're going to know this stuff. And again, I the, the general target for this is my intermediate series, maybe tutorial 8-ish. I don't know. I haven't made those videos yet, so I can't tell. But general guess, that's probably the type of people I'm targeting with this video. So, uh, like I said, I'm starting off... Uh, with the code from the sprite animation tutorial, but I've changed some things. I've made it so that the sprite now has a, uh, a standing still animation. So you can walk, you can stand still. And how I implemented that, I've, I've kind of hinted it at it at the end of the sprite animation video. But what you do, what I did was I replaced this static uh, array of uh, rectangles with a vector of rectangles and that allows us to have a different amount of frames for different animations because as you can tell the standing still animation this one here it only requires one frame whereas the walking animations require eight frames so by making it a vector now I can have different lengths of animations and you know Bob's your uncle you create more animation states indexes uh, you got to create more here it's I'm going to put this code up on GitHub and you can check it out for yourself. But like I said, I'm assuming that you're intermediate level and you'll be able to understand this stuff. So I'm not going to go over it. That's not the point of this tutorial. The point of this tutorial is to create a system that can share resources. So first off, let's let's define the problem. What is, what is Chili's dysfunction here? What does he want to solve? Well, the way we have things right now, every character every sprite basically, has a number of animations. For our character right now, he's got eight animations. Every animation has a texture. So every animation loads a texture, and the texture that it's going to load uh, is that sprite sheet that I just closed, because I'm a fucking idiot. Here it is. Uh, this one guy here. So every animation loads this texture, but the texture contains the, uh, the frames for every animation. So there's a lot of redundancy here. We're loading the same image eight times when we only need to load it once. And that's eight times if we only have one character. If we've got 10 character, that's loading the same image 80 goddamn times when we could have only loaded it once, saved ourselves a lot of video memory. So what do we got to do? Well, what we want is we want a system where all of the characters uh, or all of the animations, they can share the same texture if they're only using the same texture, and they don't all load it individually. Uh, now, there are a bunch of ways we could implement that. We could go into main here, and we could load the texture, and then pass it into character, and then character, each animation would maybe hold like a reference or a pointer to the texture that was loaded in main. But that's annoying, because, you know, think of the case where you've got like maybe a few tens of characters, hundreds of animations, and they're all loading different textures. When you add a new character now, you've got to add the, the texture loading code into main, and when you remove one, you should probably remove it from main. You've got to keep track of all that shit yourself. That's a pain in the ass. What we want is we want every character to know 
which um, which textures it needs basically by every animation knowing which textures it needs to load and then the, the animations will load the textures themselves but again now we've come full circle now we've got the problem all the animations are loading the textures separately so they're duplicating them in memory they're wasting a lot of time loading they're wasting a lot of video memory so how do we do this well let's create a class that is going to keep track of the textures that we've loaded and is going to make sure that there aren't any duplicates loaded. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to create a class and let's just call this class, uh, we'll call it the texture codex. And the way I, the reason why I'm calling it codex, I mean, I might call it texture manager, but that just triggers some people who are, you know, small minded. So public, and private. Now, we only really need a single texture codex for our entire game. You know, you could probably dream up situations where you might want to have multiple separate ones, but uh, again, you design for the level that you're going to be working at, and we're not going to be doing anything that complicated. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make just uh, texture codec basically all static. So, first off, we need some things that we're going to be using. One of the things we're going to need is stuff from memory. And another one we're going to need is stuff from, uh, I'm going to say map, or maybe it's, I don't know if it's called unordered map, un, or, yeah, unordered map, there we go. And, well, we probably don't need it, but let's include string as well, because we're going to be using that. So. What we've got here now is we want a, a map, and that is a content addressable container, uh, associative a container, that will associate the name of a texture with the texture. So what we do is we go std unordered map, and we want the, the key name, that's the thing that is going to be used to look up the textures, and that is going to be std string. And then the uh, the value name is going to be the texture. And we're going to store the textures as a smart pointer. std uh, shared pointer to sf texture. Now, I don't use... Sometimes you see online, you see people using shared pointer a lot when they shouldn't be. Uh, generally, your go-to smart pointer, uh, let's just call this one textures, by the way. Your go-to smart pointer should be a unique pointer. If you need to manage some dynamically allocated object, you should be using a unique pointer. The only time you use a shared pointer is if you've got multiple things that own that object together. Because uh, well, I mean, if you use a unique pointer and you had objects, let me just bring up a diagram here. So if you use a unique pointer and you've got objects A and B and they both have a reference to some resource R, okay? And so the unique pointer is owned by A and then B just has a normal pointer. Well, what if A dies? If A dies, A's unique pointer dies, and that means A's unique pointer will free this, and now B will be pointing to Garbo, and it's gonna fuck you up. So, you don't do that. You don't have a unique pointer in the case where two or more objects can own another, can own a resource, right? You use a shared pointer, and these guys both have these are shared pointers now. I don't know how to... I'm, they're shared pointers. Believe me. Shared. All right. You, you believe in life after love, all that good stuff. Uh, so, if they're both shared and one of these guys dies, it won't automatically kill this guy. This only dies when the last shared pointer dies, then it cleans up after the resource. That's the difference between shared pointer and unique pointer. And usually you're fine with just one main object owning a resource, and other objects can just maybe have references to them, to the, uh, the resource if they really need it. But you got one main object and he de determines when the resource lives and dies. But with our, um, 
with our characters here. We want our characters to share a texture, and if one of those characters is erased, but the other character isn't, we don't want to get rid of that resource. We want to keep it alive, so we use a shared pointer to the texture. Long story short. Uh, and this is going to be static. And then what we want is we want a couple static functions. Well, first off, we want a static function, we'll call this acquire. And what it's going to do is it's going to get a constant std string reference. No, no insert. Actually, at my workplace, I actually tore the insert key right out of my keyboard. No lie, because I fucking hate that shit. And we'll just call this name of this. This probably needs a return value. It's going to be void. Uh, so, what are we going to do here? Well, what we do is uh, we, we check the unordered map first and we see if the texture has already been loaded. So how do we do that? Well, I mean, we could go constant auto i is equal to texture, it should be textures, textures dot find name. And this will give us an iterator into our uh, our map of texture names to textures. And then we want to check to see if that iterator is valid. And the way we do that is, of course, we go if i is not equal to texture.end. That means that we've got a valid... Wait, why is this not happy? Tech... tech textures though. It's textures though. There we go. So if it's valid, that means that this texture was already loaded. It's already in the map. And so all we got to do is just return a, uh, a copy of the shared pointer to that thing. So then we go... what do we do? I guess we just go return i pointer to and the iterator is going to give us a pair. The first part of the pair is the name. It's the key. That's the string. The second one is going to be the uh, the shared pointer to the texture. And we just return this. Now, I was dumb. Obviously, the acquire function is not going to return void. It is going to return a std shared pointer to sf texture. Like this. And that will return a new shared pointer and now the uh, the resource is going to have a new owner now if the iterator is equal to end that means that we have not loaded the texture yet so all we got to do in that case is we go textures not insert and we go std make underscore shared sf texture and uh, let me think here so when we insert we have to insert uh, I believe we have to insert a pair right and I'm not exactly sure if we insert this, a pair we insert the key and then the, let's try key and then value insert key and value so SF texture, create a new texture, and we insert that. How's that? That's no good. Well, ball sack. So we got to insert a pair. But actually, I'm thinking right now, we have to we have to insert the, the created texture object, but we also have to load the texture. Uh, we have to load the image into the texture. So what we should do is we should go something like auto text, or I'll call this one P, text is equal to, and then we'll create a new texture with a shared pointer, owned by a shared pointer. Then we go ptext, pointer to, uh, load from file, and we call it with the, the name that we're passed in. And then after we've loaded from the file, then we actually put it into our map. So... We can just use, uh, what do you call that, uniform, initializer, whatever. And we go name, and then ptext. 
and now we'll put that shizzle into our map and then we return ptex and there we go now whoever calls this either way they're going to get a texture sometimes it's going to trigger a texture to be loaded sometimes they're just going to get a another handle on a texture that was already loaded but there you have it and then all you got to do is go wherever you were loading uh, you were calling texture load from file and instead what we're going to do well instead of having a texture now we're going to have a shared pointer to a texture so we're going to go std shared pointer to our texture and let's rename this ptex now because it's a pointer and that's how I do that's how I do with pointers now here we're not going to go texture.load from file we're going to go ptex is equal to uh, texture codex acquire and then we're going to acquire this texture by fair means or foul and then all we got to do is we go in, when we go to apply to sprite instead of passing in texture we're going to pass in you know dereferenced pointer uh, ptex ptex though it's like this and this should work and it should nope it doesn't work i did something stupid all right well now we get to have the fun of wait link unresolved external symbol render stand on oh, no. all right well this is static that basically means that we're gonna have to do some bullshit here we got to redeclare it here uh, outside of the class it's just the way static members work um so we go static we read we basically just copy this is what we do type name then we go texture codex and then we go textures and this will now actually make the thing i believe let's try it yeah now it works it's just some dumb bullshit you have to do with static uh members and if we run it Mm, we shouldn't see any difference. It should still work the same, but it should be using approximately eight times less memory. And if we had, you know, ten textures or ten characters, then it would be using eighty times less memory. And that's that. Now, this is great, but it has uh, one one fatal flaw, and that is. Let's imagine we've got a game here, and the game has three levels, and in those levels you've got characters. So in the first level you've got two uh, red type characters and one yellow character. Second level, two yellow, one green. Third level, two green and one blue. And so what we're doing here is when we load level one, we're going to load, we're going to create these characters. The first time we create this one it's going to create it's going to load the texture into memory the second one we create it's going to get a, a reference or a pointer to the already loaded texture and then when we load this one it's going to load the yellow dude texture right and that's great now when we end level one and enter level two we're going to delete these guys but guess what these guys are going to stay in memory so now we're going to load and it's going to get a pointer to this one and then we're going to load this one and it's going to load a new texture but the red texture is going to be chilling out in memory and just wasting space now why is this well can you figure it out before chili tells you that's the real question the thing is is that um we're missing we're missing something in this picture and the, the something that we're missing is the codex because the codex has a map and the map has smart pointers to everything that you load so even though the original characters were destroyed and their smart pointers were destroyed there's still the smart pointer in the codex that's keeping these objects alive even after they're not being used anymore and they're just going to clutter up in memory you're going to basically have a memory leak and you don't want a memory leak so what we do is uh, we add an extra function in here and we're going to call this function this one is void for sure we're going to call this one murder 
orphans. Because that sounds nice and then you don't collect garbage. And what this guy is going to do is it's quite simple. All we got to do is go through our uh, textures here and basically uh, destroy, remove all of the entries in the map that uh, only have one owner of the texture. So for every entry in the map, we check the shared pointer, we check how many people are uh, sharing the resource. And if there's only one, that means that there's no nothing but the uh, map is accessing the resource, and then we're free to remove that from the map. That will destroy the shared pointer, that will destroy the resource. Now there's a problem. Normally what I like to use for this bullshit is I like to use something called stand std remove if. And this is my go-to for removing a bunch of shit from a container. But the problem is, is that remove if don't work for uh, associative containers like the map. Actually, I just I just realized one thing. I don't like the name that I gave this uh, variable. Normally, when I have a container of pointers, I like to indicate that in the container. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for textures, and I'm going to replace it with texture pointers and I'm just going to replace all in selection there we go so these are texture pointers anyways uh, so what we've got to do is we've got to do some iterator bullshit so for auto i is equal to texture pointers dot begin and as long as i is not equal to texture pointers dot end and that's it we're not going to have the third part, and you'll see why in a second. So now we want to check if I pointer to... Hmm. No, I'm not sure. Yes, if I pointer to second, which gives us the, uh, the smart pointer, dot mm, unique. There we go. So this returns true if there is only one owner for the resource. So if there's only one owner, that owner must be us, the, the codex, and so we're free to erase that entry from the map. Now, erasing from the map is complicated. Erasing does not invalidate any iterators except for the iterator pointing to the thing that is erased. Um, so what you've got to do, one of the things about erasing is it gives you the it returns an iterator to the next thing in the container. So all you gotta do is set i equal to textures, texture pointers dot erase, uh, and we pass in the iterator. And that will give us iterator to the next thing, which will still be valid, It'll, everything will be fine. Uh, but if you don't do this, and you just erase, your i will become invalid, and then anything you try to do with it will result in an error. So you've got to set i equal to the return value of a race. And that's why I'm not doing this bullshit here, because you've got to update your eye inside the loop like this. Uh, otherwise, if the resource had actual character owners, or actual animation owners, then you just integrate, iterate, you increment. That's the word I'm looking for. I words. You increment I and you keep going, searching for all unique and erasing them from this guy, murdering those orphans. And now this will allow us to get rid of shit from our memory. Um, so let me just uh, man, let me just show you what it looks like. So let's create a character fucker and. So we'll create a character fucker, and then we'll create a character. We'll be we'll be original here, and we'll call him. We'll call him fucker two. We'll give him a different position on the screen, and then we'll destroy them, and then we'll call another. We'll create another character, and we will also call him fucker the second incarnation of the first fucker. Anyways, uh, so what happens when we step through this bullshit? Well, let's try and find out. So we enter, we enter the fucker. 
never mind, this is, this is not my code. Step in here, and we're going to create a bunch of animations. So let's, uh, let's step into these animation creations, and we'll step into this one, and uh, we'll step into, yeah, yeah, good. We'll step into the acquire, step out of that, that's creating a string. And in here, we're going to search for the texture. We're not going to find it. So we're going to create a new texture. We're going to load it. We're going to insert it into the map. And then we're going to return that. And everything is... This, yeah. And we're out. Let's step into the next animation. Let's create an animation here. And we'll go through all the bullshits. And we'll step in and step out and step in. Now we're going to search for it. We're going to find it. So we just return the one that we found. And there you go. Now we're not making dumb copies of shit. Now we're only keeping one copy of the texture in memory. Uh, let me go back down here. And again, if we go down here to fucker 2, let's set a breakpoint and let's uh, continue into yeah. here. We are out and in. And again, when we acquire, we get the, th the thing that was in the goddamn map, right? So we're not loading extra copies for other sprites. Only one copy. Now, when we go out of here, we are going to destroy those characters. So now when we step into here, normally what we would assume is we would assume that characters were destroyed, so the textures were unloaded from memory, so now we've got to load the texture again. Uh, but if we step into here, step out, step in, we know, we'll notice that it's still in memory. And that's because we haven't called our good old friend Murder Orphans. So now, if we go into here and we call uh, Texture Codex Murder Orphans, uh, now, and I'll just skip this point here, we know that we're going to load these textures, we're going to load uh, shit from we're gonna load shit into our uh, texture codex it will be in there now we're gonna step over here we're gonna murder those orphans now we step into fucker step out step in and when we go to step in no don't step out and we go to acquire this texture what's gonna happen is it's not going to find the texture because we have freed it and so it's going to have to load it over again. And that's how shit works. So, here is how you use that. Now, nah, I gotta undo a bunch of bullshit here. Um, so you load level 1, it loads these guys in. Now, here's what you don't do. You don't destroy well you destroy these guys for sure when you're at the end, end of level one you destroy all of your uh, your characters uh what you don't do is you don't call murder orphans at this point because if you call murder orphans you're going to unload both of these guys and then when it comes time to load level two you're going to have to reload the guys that you already had in memory so what you do is you destroy your characters in here, then you create the characters for level two. Creating the characters for level two will create more shared pointers to the ones that are needed and will also load new textures that you didn't have before. Then after you've created your entities for level two, then you call murder orphans and that's going to clear this guy out. And now all you have are the textures that you actually need. And then at the end of level 2, you destroy your entities. That destroys these smart pointers. So now the only smart pointers pointing to these fuckers is going to be the ones from the codex. Then you load your entities for level 3. That will create smart pointers to what is necessary. Load the new shit that's necessary. And then again you call murder orphans. And that is how you live your life. Destroy entities, load new entities, then murder orphans, lather, rinse, repeat. And this is what I recommend for managing resources. Now, this doesn't 
have to just be, as I said before, it doesn't have to be SF textures. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be SFML. It can be anything. It can be sounds, MP3 files, textures, any other large resource that's going to be shared by multiple entities in your game. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Just acquire and murder orphans. Use a nice unordered map. I don't use a normal map because unordered map is more efficient for lookup. Uh, it doesn't matter super that much though because you're not going to be, you know, looking these things up all the time. You're only doing a lookup basically when you uh, when you call acquire, which is mostly at the beginning of a level. But um, you know, just just because I like to use the unordered map. It uses a uh, uses a hash map instead of a tree. But yeah, that's resource management with shared pointer and a map. And it's great. I love it. Uh, never fails. I'm just joking. Probably no, there's no one size fits all solution, but I think it works in a lot of situations. And it's very simple, as you can see. Uh, just one thing, to, again, when I'm saying, don't go ahead and use shared pointers for every goddamn thing. Think first, and always prefer unique pointer first. Only use shared pointer when you've actually got a situation of a resource being shared by different entities, where either of the entities could die first. That's the situation where you have a shared pointer. If you've got one entity that's going to be alive from the beginning to the end of the resource, you don't need a shared pointer. You just make that entity the owner of the resource and he will keep it alive. He will manage it for all of the other things that also maybe depend on that resource. So, shared pointer, great, but it doesn't see a lot of use in my code is what I'm saying. I use it when it's when it's warranted, but I don't use it that often because usually you don't fucking need it. It has overhead compared to um, Unique Pointer, and it's not something you should worry about, but again, if you don't need it, why fucking use it? Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. Oh shit, this is... How long has this been displaced off the side of the screen. Anyways, if you like the video, if you like my displaced uh, IDE window, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more C++.